Throughout this pandemic, and particularly at key stages of it, I've tried, uh, we have tried very hard to be open and upfront with you about the challenges and the uncertainties confronting us so that you can better understand, if not always agree with, I accept, the difficult judgments and decisions that we have had to make. I'm afraid this is another moment when such frankness is really important. Uh, the purpose of today's update is to level with you on what we know so far about the spread in Scotland of the new Omicron variant, and also to share our estimate at this stage of what we're likely to face in the days and weeks to come. Uh, the fact is that we do face a renewed and a very severe challenge in the face of the new Omicron variant. Uh, to be blunt, because of the much greater and faster transmissibility of this new variant, we may be facing, indeed, we may be starting to experience a potential tsunami of infections. Uh, now, we're not alone in that, far from it. Everything I'm about to share with you about the situation in Scotland is, I believe, broadly reflected in the data for the rest of the UK too. And although I'm not familiar with the data elsewhere, I would suspect it is reflected uh, there too. However, we have just published an evidence paper which seeks to provide you with more detail about the Omicron variant here in Scotland at this stage. And you can find that evidence paper online on the Scottish Government uh, website or Twitter feed. Um, now, I'm going to come back to more detail in that and to tell you uh, what we do know about and what we expect from Omicron, and, and I'll do that shortly. Uh, firstly, though, as I usually do, I'm just going to briefly summarise today's statistics. Uh, 5,018 positive cases were reported yesterday, uh, which is 9.3% of all tests carried out. Now, uh, this is one day's figures, <clears throat> but as you can see, it is a sharp rise on the average of around 2,800 per day that we have been reporting recently. And it underlines our fear that a new wave uh, may indeed be starting. Uh, 573 people are currently in hospital uh, with COVID. That's five fewer than yesterday. And 40 people are in intensive care, one more than yesterday. Although I would uh, remind you that there is always a time lag uh, between rising cases and rising numbers of people in hospital and intensive care. And sadly, a further 19 deaths have been reported in the past 24 hours. And that takes the total number of deaths under the daily definition to 9,707. And I want again to send my condolences to everyone who has lost a loved one. I am pleased to report though, and this is important and will become increasingly important in the weeks to come, that the vaccination programme continues apace. Uh, 4 million 358,725 people uh, now have a first dose, 3 million 967,000 477 are now double dosed and we have also now very significantly passed uh, 2 million booster or third doses uh, administered in Scotland to be precise 2 million 915 on first second third and booster doses Scotland is still the most vaccinated part of the UK and again I want to record my thanks to everyone involved in organizing and delivering this vaccination program without a doubt the biggest uh, peacetime logistical exercise that has ever been undertaken in Scotland. Now, in relation to the Omicron variant uh, specifically, as of 5 p.m. yesterday, there were 110 confirmed cases in Scotland. Uh, and to give some context to that, 10 days ago, we reported a total of nine confirmed cases. Now, these are confirmed cases, and by that we mean that Omicron has been confirmed through genomic sequencing. But there are two reasons why confirmed cases represent just the tip of the iceberg and shouldn't really be looked at uh, as the best indicator of the true uh, prevalence of the variant in Scotland right now. Uh, the first reason is because genomic sequencing takes some time, much longer than processing a PCR test. So there is a time lag in these figures. But secondly, while in Scotland we do a lot of genomic sequencing, not all tests are or indeed can be analysed in that way. So a much better indicator of whether a case is Omicron or not is whether the PCR test shows a specific genetic characteristic 
known as the S gene dropout, and you may have heard us talk about that previously. Now, around 95% of all tests in Scotland are analysed in a way that allows us to know this. And almost all tests that do show the S gene dropout just now uh, will be the Omicron variant. So these figures help to give a much better sense of the true scale of the variant in Scotland at this stage. And what they show is that Omicron right now is rising exponentially. Indeed, what we are seeing in the data just now is perhaps the fastest exponential growth that we have seen in this pandemic so far. In the final week of November, if we look at all of the COVID cases recorded in Scotland, there were no days when the proportion of cases with the S gene dropout was higher than 1%. However, by last Sunday, the 5th of December, the proportion had risen to 2%. On Tuesday, it was just over 4%. On Wednesday, it was almost 7%. And today, it is 15.5%. Now, you might think, well, these are still relatively low percentages. But consider that trend. This is doubling it on a very, very rapid basis. Indeed, our estimate at this stage is that the doubling time for Omicron cases is between two and three days. And actually, it may be closer to two days than to three days. Now, if that continues, and we have no reason at this stage to expect that it won't, Omicron is going to very quickly overtake Delta as the dominant strain in Scotland. Indeed, I think we can now say with some confidence that we expect it to overtake Delta within days not weeks. Uh, we estimate this may be as early as the very beginning of next week. Now, you might be asking, why does that matter? Uh, and it matters because Omicron has a much higher R number, a higher transmissibility than the Delta variant, which for some time now has been the dominant strain in Scotland and much of the world. So the R number in Scotland in recent weeks has been hovering around one. We always like it to be below one, but hovering around one is not the, uh, the worst place uh, to be. And of course, we've been seeing uh, a decline in cases in Scotland in recent weeks. However, the R number associated with Omicron is likely, we think, to be well over two and possibly closer to three. And as and when Omicron becomes the dominant strain, as it is in the process of doing, the R number associated with it will then increasingly become the R number for Scotland as a whole. So as a result, our estimate is that the R number overall in Scotland is likely to rise and possibly to rise above two. Now, all of these estimates are based on the limited data that we already have here in Scotland, and we have been analysing that closely, but also other data available from South Africa and elsewhere. And what it all means is that in our judgment right now, it isn't any longer a question of if we are facing a surge in cases. We now believe that to be virtually certain. Uh, our health protection teams are working really hard through contact tracing, testing and isolation to slow the spread of Omicron cases. And I want to thank them for the excellent work they are doing and everybody across the population who will be following their advice. But the nature of transmission and the nature of a variant that is even more transmissible than what has come before means that we do expect to see a rapid rise in cases in the days and weeks ahead. This is driven by the transmissibility of this variant. Uh, figures we're seeing here in Scotland are consistent with data from around the world, and they provide a considerable degree of certainty that Omicron is significantly more transmissible than the Delta variant.